No, she's a teacher. Those are like teachers and shit. Yeah, look, she's doing something. She does not look like she's enjoying it. That's a really long one. You should, you should, um, you should, um, Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I think we're nearly ready to start. Just the usual housekeeping. If I could ask mobile phones to be switched off, lowered all, or in air, airplane mode, is that the correct term? Okay, so we're going to start our proceedings tonight. Graduation night 2023, and our choir are going to start us off this evening. So we'll be here for about an hour and a half, I would suspect. So enjoy yourselves. Goramaygov. I wouldn't be who I am without you I wouldn't sing the way I sing without you You fill my eyes up with colour And you'll always be my mother 
I wouldn't be who I am. I wouldn't be the son that I am. Without a father who showed me I can face all the bullies at school. You taught me how to keep my cool. I wouldn't be who I am. I wouldn't be the brother I am. Without a sister who understands my ambitions and dreams, we always were on the same team. I wouldn't be I am. I wouldn't be the human I am. Without the friends that let me fly and help me land, our foundations go deep. I'll always have a place to sleep. I wouldn't be who I am. I wouldn't be who I am. And so we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. So good evening, everybody. And most welcome to our graduation mass here in St. Brendan's. I want to begin by acknowledging words of our sound engineer tonight, Kevin. Kevin said tonight that this is like the Late Late Show. Ryan Tuberty to my right, Patrick Kilty has arrived. <laughs> so I'd like to welcome Father Jim who has uh, journeyed with uh, the men in sixth year, um, longer than I have. So, Father Jim, you're most welcome in celebrating our Mass uh, this evening. A most beautiful hymn that has situated ourselves in the sacredness of family and those who have walked with us. And here this evening as we celebrate our Holy Mass, mindful of our Heavenly Father, of our Heavenly Mother, and of our Brother Jesus who is with us as we come this night in marking the end of one journey, but it's the beginning of another mindful of the stories that have shaped our lives and bring us to this present moment. And we notice the moods of the hearts and pay attention to how we're feeling this night. So we've come in sincere gratitude for what was and the great welcome, the gift of what we will be. So above all, we acknowledge God's presence in ourselves, each other, and the world around us. So beginning our Mass this evening, we do so by the presentation of symbols. So I invite those forward now to lead us uh, in the symbols. And the great Irish poet, Patrick Kavanagh, he spoke about uh, the bits and pieces that make up our lives. So we're going to present now the bits and pieces that make up the journey of the students here in their time in St. Brendan's. Aidan brings up a football to remind us of our year group sports achievements. Mark brings forward a candle. The candle is an example of the hope in our lives. So when in times of need, let the flame be a beacon of hope to guide you to better times. Brian brings forward a globe to represent the many roads ahead for us. The future is in our hands. Matthew brings up a tin whistle, which remind, reminds us of all our achievements. Each note represents the steps that we take to craft our own tune. Not everybody will have the same melody, but your tune is your own unique achievement. Brian brings forward a piece of artwork which symbolizes our aspirations to continue to use the skills we have learned to explore the world around us. <coughs> uh. 
And so as always at the beginning of Mass, we have a most beautiful opportunity to just take a few moments of preparation. I, I know today was full of energy, of excitement. Couldn't help notice, but a car belonging, I'm sure, to one of the students wrapped in cling film outside today. So um, I'm sure there's great sense of fun and excitement. But let's ask God to be with us. And maybe for the times that we have failed to live up to what has been asked of us, let's ask for his love, mercy, and for the forgiveness of all sins. I confess to Almighty God, to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us from all of our sins and bring us and all those we pray for to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. God, our Father, our life is blessed with many good gifts. Make us truly thankful for the gifts of our own personalities, for the gift of people who guide us and help us to grow, especially those who have journeyed with us in St. Brendan's. We pray this night for our Lievenshurts. Be your presence now in our world, especially in how we relate to others, in all that we say and do. For we make this now our prayer through Christ our Lord. So now we have the readings. I invite those now leading us in the first reading, please, to come forward. First reading, a reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord was addressed to me saying, for surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me, says the Lord. And I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to Oh, 
Gospel according to Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise so as you can see that all the microphones were adjusted to my height. <laughs> so apologies, Father Jim. Mr. Paul said there at the start, you know, that will be here about an hour and a half. I couldn't help it but be brought back to one of my last masses in Tralee before I came to Killarney last summer. Celebrated a mass for the credit union and the same question was asked of me uh, before we began, Father, how long would the mass be? Um, and I kind of said maybe 30, maybe 40 minutes. And I said, why? And she said, well, Father, she said, you know, the caterers told us that the integrity of the chips it wouldn't be there in an hour's time. So I promise you there's a fantastic barbecue being prepared and I hope the integrity of what's being prepared will be there so it won't uh, be for an hour anyway, hopefully uh, this evening. Friends, I have come at the 11th hour. I have come perhaps even later uh, to the circuit lives of our Leaving Cert students. Uh, but I have certainly listened. And to those who have taken the time to share uh, a word, a sentiment about you, it really all rests upon one word. And I'm going to say that word tonight to you. It's a word that we don't hear too often. It's a word that we need to hear more often. And that is, I'm proud of you. And I don't say that word to simply make you feel good about yourself. I don't say that word to add a bit of cheese to the ceremony. But I am proud of you. And if I feel that sense of pride here tonight in this celebration here in this most sacred building, how much more is your teachers, how much more is, are those in positions of leadership here in the school and indeed for your family uh, who is gathered here with you? I suppose to acknowledge as well uh, John C is our uh, cameraman and just to welcome those as well who join us uh, via the classrooms. I can see who's talking down the back by the way as well, okay? <laughs> Uh, so, but thank you for your understanding. Uh, there isn't room to swing anything inside this chapel here tonight, so thank you for, for joining with us. I celebrated graduation uh, 13 years ago. It's not that long ago, is it? Okay. But for myself, looking back, I always found these weeks leading up to graduation and indeed to 
uh, these um, days of endings uh, in secondary school always quite strange because they almost go by so quick that seems to really it comes to its end before we know it. We're out the door and a new chapter begins. But it's said that in every ending there's a new beginning and even the world's greatest philosophers can't really capture when one moment ends and another begins. It's always continuous. And so my mind over these last number of days uh, reflecting on that notion of endings and new beginnings. I go back to a native daughter of this parish and on April 20th, she spoke on Radio Kerry. She's a local woman from Muckras, Brita Joy. I don't know if she's here tonight, maybe she is, um, but I'm sure many of you here uh, know Brita. Uh, fantastic journalist, writer, uh, just a great thinker, great all around person, has a great insight into life. She spoke on Radio Kerry and she spoke about the subject of, you know, why do bad things happen to good people? And it turned into a question of endings, and especially when it comes uh, to saying goodbye to those that we have loved. And she went to the why questions. You know, why were they taken from us? But Breda beautifully turned it on its head and she said, maybe we should be asking, you know, why were they given to us? And Father Jim for us read the gospel that we would have heard yesterday at our Sunday Masses, and that was the gospel of the Ascension. And I'm sure that question is the same question the disciples asked as well at the ascension when Jesus returned to the Father. Why was he taken from us? But going back to what Breda said, maybe we should be asking ourselves as Christians and as Catholics, why was Jesus given to us? And very simply, he was given to us because he took on our human frailty, brought it to the divine person. He offered his own life to give us new life. So tonight we may ask, why are you leaving us? But that's a question that is followed by an answer that is defined by time. Your time here is finding a conclusion, a natural conclusion. And the journey continues outside of these sacred and historic walls. But I'm going to ask the same question that Breda Joy asks. Why were you given to us? It's a very deep question. But the answer is very simple. Because the Holy Spirit brought you to walk among us and to leave a legacy, no matter how small or how insignificant you may feel it is, because it matters. You matter. And for this, we're proud of you and we're thankful for your time and presence with us. But as we heard in the Gospel, just moments before Jesus' ascension, he told his followers very simply, he said, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, urging them to baptize, to teach, and to carry on the work that he has begun. It's a very blunt word, but I love it. Jesus was always about action. So that's the word for you tonight. Go. The world is waiting for you. Jesus said, act on what I have taught you. Put it into practice. And that command is a call to all of us to go and transform the world, to go and pick up those who have fallen, to go and heal those who are hurting, go and love those who may be forgotten. Or as our Mass says at the very end, go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Why? Because you, leave and cert graduates, you might be the only Gospel people may read in their lives. And I go back to Pope John Paul II, an incredible figure in our church. And he said at the dawn of the millennium in the year 2000, he said, we live in a world that is continuously looking for formulas. But you know, in 2023, aren't we doing the same? We're looking for formulas everywhere to solutions and to the problems. But John Paul said back then, and he speaks right now from heaven to us, that the answers aren't found in formulas, but in the person of Jesus Christ. So maybe ourselves tonight, and for you, the class of 2023, is to be like the disciples, to come down from the mountain and to go out into the world and to bring that giftedness and that great strength and power that you have shown here over your time. Because really, to sum it all up, that's why we're proud of you. 
That's why here tonight there's the glints in the eyes of your moms and your dads and your brothers and your sisters because we are proud of you. And I finish tonight with the beautiful words of St. Paul, great, great man of the gospel, great man of action. And he wrote to the community of Ephesus and he said to them, he said, glory be to you whose power working in you can infinitely do more than you can ask or imagine. That is my prayer. It's the prayer of Father Jim. It's the prayers of your teachers, your parents, and all those who have journeyed with you. Glory be to him whose power working in you this night and always, you can infinitely do more than you can ask or imagine. Amen. So I invite those now forward who are leading us in our prayer of the faithful. So friends, on this most significant night of celebration, it is with great confidence that we bring all our prayers to God who extends his love and mercy to all people. Lord, we thank you for the support of our parents throughout the years. We hope that they know how much we appreciate them. Although sometimes we might have difficulty showing it, we pray to know how important they are to us. Lord, hear us. Lord, we pray for the staff of St. Bernard's College. We'd like to thank them for their guidance and for support throughout these memorable years. We pray for the students, may them be ambitious for, in their work, happy in everything they do, and always have hopes in the futures. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Tonight we think of all the friends we have made during our years in the sim. We, may, we remember our laughter and our tears. Lord, as we reach this stage of our life's journey, may we be blessed with good friends. May we always carry with us good memories of our school friends. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We miss our son, our winter fane, a ta imher rowing, le cred of day. Bona galak, each shoot of idilis dun skull. Is a ta nish eg de have, a barhurst nan ross. Irimish earth, a hearn of solas. Cree is Dokus day, a huart dar dialig is dar garja, a hear na eishlin. Lord, as we leave this stage of our lives, may we always keep the light of hope in our hearts. With each new day that comes and every step that we take, may we always remember the true essence of the human spirit, that is hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, tonight we remember all places where peace does not prevail. We ask you to help world leaders to choose paths to peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, As we reach this crossroads, may we be guided and helped to choose the right road and to make the best of the gifts we've been given. Guide us to remain true to ourselves as we step tentatively into the future. Lord, hear us. Merciful God, our creator and source of all blessings, you delight in the happiness of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our graduates, for all people, and for your church throughout our world. For we make these and all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. So friends, we move now into the heart of our Mass, to the liturgy of the Eucharist, and I invite those now forward to present to the altar the gifts of bread and wine.
I suppose the Holy Spirit working among us this night. Just so beautiful to have Carmel and Mike there present the gifts of bread and wine and special night for Mike as well as he comes to retirement after 40 years of dedicated service here to St. Brendan. So as Mike and Carmel have presented the gifts of bread and wine, we just pray for the giftedness of all those um, who make this community uh, what it is. So a very special prayer for you as well uh, this night, Mike. So in offering the sacrifice of our Mass, let us now stand as we pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Merciful God, our Creator, source of all blessings, you delight in the happiness of your people. We pray this night as we present the gifts of bread and wine, that to the purifying action of your holy grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have brought our Leaving Cert students to this special moment in their lives. For you guided, directed, and enriched them through their years in St. Brendan's, so that in this time we join with them in offering our thanks and praise to you, Heavenly Father, for all you have done for them. By your providence and grace, you accomplish the fulfillment of our life's calling to love you and one another. And so united as one, we join with the angels and saints, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So I invite you to be seated or to kneel whatever's most comfortable for you as we come to the Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me the mystery of our faith, my Lord and my God. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Ray, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and grant to our loved ones and all our faithful departed a place of light, refreshment, and peace. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. So united as one family here of St. Brendan's this night, let's pray now in the words that Jesus taught us. We might stay seated maybe because I think the camera and the rooms mightn't be able to see the Mass. So let's pray now in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Let's pray now for peace. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord, may it always be with you. And, with your spirit. and let's offer each other a sign of that peace. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter my room. room. Only, only say the, the word, and my soul, soul shall be healed. The body of Christ is So I think Mr. Coffey is there somewhere, but I'm sure nobody is excluded from the fantastic barbecue outside afterwards, okay? It's the same when we come to the Holy Mass. Nobody is excluded from the altar of the Lord. So Father Jim and myself and the Eucharistic ministers will go to our positions. So please come forward to receive. If you wish to come forward for a blessing, feel free to do so. If you're from a different faith tradition or none, you're not excluded, please come forward to Father Jim and myself as well for a blessing. And we just uh, pray at this time for each other and especially for all our leaving certs as the choir now will lead us in this time of sacred music.
face of the shining stars to you. Deep peace of the gentle night to you. Moon and stars pour their healing light on you.
graduation friendship. We're graduating and we know our lives will be different and new. We're going out into the world, our goals and dreams to pursue. But one thing will never ever change as we go our separate ways. The friends we've made in school will be our friends for all our days. The special ties and attachments we've made, these bonds will never be broken. We'll continue to feel that special bond, though words may not be spoken. So it's not goodbye, but rather farewell. I'll see you again, my friend. Your friendship means a lot to me, and it will never end. Came into the embers, stayed out for the breeze. I need to feel elements to remind me there's beauty when it's bleak. Stuck all along before lights down. What do I breathe? Oh, I know. The more that I love, the less did I feel. The times that I drunk never worry. The city or scars with you, but I know. Maybe I won't, but the waves won't break my boat. But the waves. Won't break my bones. Stones crashed on the boardwalk. We rushed through the trees. I keep my eyes peeled. The memories always fall short of what we could have been. Let the long fall last call What do I need? Oh, I know The more that I love The less did I feel The times that I drunk Never were real They see that all the scars Will heal, but I know Maybe I won't But the way won't break my boat But the waves won't break my boat Okay, we're going to have a few speeches now before we finish the Mass off. Um, we're going to ask Khan to come down, and Tom is nearby, uh, and then Mr. Coffey is going to speak as well. So if I can ask Khan and Tom to come up first, uh, and then Mr. Coffey will say a few words on behalf of the school. Um, well, first of all, thanks to everyone for coming, and uh, I'm sure Tom is going to have a lot to say, and we all want to get outside, so I'm going to try to keep this as quick as possible. Not Sean Coffey quick, that goes 25 minutes over, actually quick. <laughs> and lastly, lastly. Yeah. Um, so all throughout tonight, we'll hear a lot of thank yous for a lot of very important people, because we are very thankful for them and all the help that we've gotten throughout the years. But I want to do something that all of those people have been doing for us for our entire time in senior, junior cycle, and even before that. I want to focus on us. Us as a student body, us as a year group, and us as a collection of young men that have had the opportunity to share these important years with each other. At the beginning of our time together, for a lot of us, it started in a very unusual place. 
We had just been faced with the pandemic and we all lost two very important and formative years in our life. This kicked off a bit of a theme that would run through our time together as a collective and as individuals, a theme of challenge and adversity. I know that's kind of a bleak start, but I promise it gets nicer. <laughs> when you hear the word adversity or challenge, we tend to automatically associate it with the negatives, like struggle, pain. Together, we struggled to adjust back to school life, back to normal that wasn't normal to us anymore. And for some of us, we had to deal with the pain of coming back to a place that was no longer familiar to us. But there is one thing I've been so lucky to learn from this group, that these challenges don't have to just mean struggle and pain, but it can be about opportunity. The opportunity, to, the opportunity for resilience and for growth. But the thing about growth, and the thing a lot of our teachers learn the hard way about growth, is that if you have somewhere to grow to, you must have somewhere to grow from. At the beginning, we were not perfect. Even though we may look perfect now, we still are not. In fear of getting the head eaten off me, I've decided not to include any anecdotes of us growing because a lot of it comes from mistakes. We have made a lot of them, some bigger than others, but all the same, I'm glad we made those mistakes. Here in this school, where we were afforded an opportunity to grow and to become better young men, no matter how difficult it was for everyone involved. I hope that in our futures, as we go on and as we make more mistakes, and we will make much more mistakes, that we will take with us this idea of learning from them and becoming better and turning those mistakes into a lesson. <coughs> See, I told you it ended nicely. <laughs> All right, I'm going to hand you over to Tom so he can give a, a much more professional speech than mine. But I'll, I'll first of all leave you with a quote that is probably a quote from every single person in this year and a quote that has gotten me through a lot of the years that have been tough. Be grand. Thank you very much. Well, uh, tough to follow that. Uh, as Khan mentioned, I usually have a lot to say, so I'll try and keep this quick. I don't want to spoil the chips. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, uh, Reverend Father, uh, teachers, staff, and most important of all, the graduating class of 2023. Good evening and congratulations to the class of 2023. It is a great honor to be delivering this speech on this important milestone in our lives. Uh, today marks the end of our time in St. Brendan's College. And to me, it seems quite fitting that our time here in the SEM should end in the same place that it began five or six years ago. It's strange to think that five or six years ago, we entered these very halls for the first time, and we sat in this very chapel for our very first assembly as a year group. Now, I'm not gonna lie and say that I, deep, I was deeply affected by the words of that very assembly. In fact, I'd be lying if I said I remembered much of it at all. But one thing I do remember is that something very unusual was said. We were told back then, as 12 and 13 year olds, that we would be back in this very chapel in five or six years for the last time as a SEM boy. They said it would go by in the blink of an eye. Back then, it seemed like quite an odd remark to say that five or six years of school, of all things, could fly. Well, I don't say this very often, but Mr. Coffey, it's fair to say that you were right. <laughs> the first time most of us set foot in these damp halls was the summer of 2017 or 2018. And the transition from being a sixth classer to a first year was an immense one. We had so many books in our bags that almost everyone had to have a chiropractor on speed dial. The laid back nature of life in primary school was swapped for the hustle and bustle of secondary school. One of the benefits of going to secondary school was the lunch lunchtime activities. Some opted for a quiet lunchtime of playing chess or gaming in the computer room. Others were ushered to join the famed choir or trad group while other brave souls opted to endure serious bodily harm while playing lunchtime soccer in the cathedral field. It seems like just yesterday we were in Capital Lee or orienteering in the woods. First year was an opportunity to explore, to meet new people, to try new things, do new subjects, find out which subjects are teachers to avoid, 
and to marvel at how ginormous or scary the six years seemed. By the end of first year, we'd settle into our new routines. Life in the SEM was by no means easy, with six subjects a day, homework on the weekends, and tests in even PE. After the new experience of first year, where we were small fish in a big pond, we entered second year. We were no longer the new kids. We were hit with an increased workload, and we even had to deal with the famed CBAs, had to choose certain subjects. In assemblies, we were told we had to set an example to the incoming first years, but for some reason, we seemed to act in defiance, as all second years do. Then came third year, and one of the most noteworthy things about third year is the junior cert, and in any other year, I would have spoken about that as an experience, but unfortunately, we were deprived of the stress because of a certain global pandemic, which shall remain nameless. The initial joy and jubilation at the fact that we wouldn't have to sit a junior cert was soon replaced by the pain of online schooling. It's often said of our generation that we are snowflakes, but that statement could not be further from the truth. I can say from personal experience that the men graduating here today are some of the toughest people I know. We survived over a year inside, where the only contact we had with our friends was through technology. School is an experience, and we were deprived of almost all of the fun aspects. Then, in 2020, as some of us entered TY and some entered third year, we were all faced with an unusual reality. Masks and hand sanitizers became a part of our daily lives. And while we were still around our friends, we were living in a dystopian world. For those of us in TY, we were deprived of certain activities, but as SEM students tried to make the best of the situation, some may remember the Christmas tree wars of TY, where each class would steal decorations from each other's rooms, much to the disappointment of Mr. Rudden. <laughs> I smile when I reflect on the football tournament where Sol scored a late winner in the final, and where Owen Kelly's boot was raised as a trophy. <laughs> then, in late August of 2021, this group before you here today became official. It comprised of those of us who wanted the freedom of TY, and those who couldn't imagine the pain of six years in the SEM. Under the leadership of Mr. Paul Barden, we journeyed through uncharted waters. We've shared some amazing times as a year group that I'm sure no one can ever forget. From Ryan Neeson's rap, to brush dancing Santas at the Market Cross, caroling in St. Columbanus's, and even a second Christmas dinner. These last five or six years have been a defining experience for us all. When I was initially told the theme of this event, I struggled to link it to this very speech. Life is a voyage, and we hold the map, is the theme. And at first, I didn't understand it. But I do know how much Mr. Coffey likes his boat metaphors, so said that I'd let it slide. Life is a voyage, but if we do hold the map, it's a blank one. But isn't that the exciting part? We have the power to determine our future through our very own actions. And now, as we become adults, we get to decide what we do next. And parents, I know it's in the job description to worry, but now it's our turn to draw the map. Help us, support us, because that's what you do best. But we are the masters of our fates. We are the captains now. Whilst today is a momentous day in our lives, this occasion is not just a celebration of us. It's also a celebration of the SEM. Firstly, I would like to thank the staff of this school, both present and past, on behalf of all of us here today. I don't think any of us would be here today if not for the support that you've given us. The staff of this school have helped us grow and witnessed firsthand how we have all evolved and become better versions of ourselves. My mind flashes back to first year, when John O'Shea would stand outside the GP and greet every student with a smile and a joke. I remember the chats with Pat Lucid, where he would trace back through your family tree and somehow know your grandparents or aunts or uncles. The staff of this school have been amazing and made life so much easier. I honestly don't know what leaving Sir Matt's would be like without Turlock O'Brien and his amazing stories, where he seems to make Matt's almost fun for a while. It would be wrong of me not to mention the great Mike Leahy, who is departing us here in the school. And while I've never actually had the honor of being taught by Mr. Leahy, from what I've heard, the business department is, missing, is going to be losing someone. A little over a year ago, I was walking around Dublin, of all places, with a green and yellow SEM hat on. And a strange man tapped me on the shoulder and said, is Mike Leahy still there? <laughs> and I responded with a confused yes. And this man, totally unknown to me, launched into his whole life story 
and how he still remembers sitting at the back of Mike's class and how, against all odds, he became an accounting teacher of all things. They say the world is a small place, but I say with certainty that there is never a SEM student too far away. Another group that deserves a mention is parents and guardians, those who have stood through us through thick and thin. They've ferried us all around the countryside and bankrolled our excursions. Parents, guardians, thank you on behalf of the class of 2023. In case we don't say it enough, we appreciate you and all that you do for us. Five years ago, I sat in this very chapel and listened to my brother James speak. And one thing that he said that struck me and stuck with me since then, some say the SEM made us, but I like to think that we made the SEM. For those of you that know me, you know that I'm quite quick to dispute any claim, but just this once, I shall agree with my brother. To understand what has gotten us to this point here today, you must first understand what makes the SEM unique. It's quite a unique school, and frankly, I couldn't have imagined going to any other school. To realize how special this school is, you only need to look at the alumni of this school and their achievements. Some have climbed the steps of the Hogan Stand, some have walked the red carpets of Hollywood, and some have sat in the chambers of the European Parliament. As we now leave this school, I'd like to think that we shall add to this list of achievements in our own way. Because one day, that quiet fella down the back of the classroom, or the noisy Egypt who'll never shut up, someday they might find themselves captaining a Kerry team to an All-Ireland victory, or winning an Oscar nomination, or being elected by millions of people. Yes, this school has most definitely shaped us over the past five or six years, and we've become better versions of ourselves. But I think that we too have shaped the SEM. We've added to the history books, and help the school develop and grow. So as our time in the SEM comes to the end and we begin the next chapter of our lives, I think that a quote by the great Michelangelo is appropriate. The greatest danger for most of us is not that our aim is too high and we miss it, but that it is too low and reach it. And so the responsibility falls upon all of us that we, the class of 2023, listen to those words. I look around this room and I see some of the greatest men that I am proud to call my classmates. Some have competed in international Olympiads. Some are pitch and putt All-Ireland champions. Some have already played in Croke Park. Some are great artists, football players, but all of us are SEM boys, and we shall share that connection forever. Deshauna Barber, a US Army soldier and Miss USA in 2016 said, do not fear failure, but be terrified of regret. So class of 2023, set your aims high, because you are capable of anything you set your mind to, because there is nothing wrong with failing, and because the only way we learn is by making mistakes. We've already achieved so much in our short lives, but I know that so much more is to come from us. Our time in the SEM has been special. We've had our fair share of low moments and high moments, but now we must leave. And while it may be a joyful moment for some and a moment of sadness for others, it's our turn to leave our mark in the world. So ladies and gentlemen, I give to you the class of 2023. As always, I get to follow the people who've worked on their speeches for weeks. Well done, Con. Well done, Tom. Um, firstly, the timetable resumes Wednesday morning at 9 o'clock, <laughs> and we expect all of you to be here. Um, okay. Uh, firstly, the thank yous. Uh, firstly, to um, our RE team, Anne, Carol, Jennifer, and Paul, who have put so much into making tonight work. And today, indeed, the activities earlier on. Secondly, to Father Sean, who, as he said, arrived at the 11th hour, and to Father Jim, who has been with us and is really still with us, even though he might be out the road in Linflesk every now and then. Uh, the work of the priests of the parish supports the school, and we are very grateful to you both. I'm also very thankful tonight for the work of the year team, and that's the year head, Mr. Barden, Mr. Kenny and Ms. Cullity. They've worked together with the group since their inception. Also to Mr. Moore and Mr. McGrath, 
who have been in their time the Leaving Cert Applied Coordinators. Also, the whole staff for your work as teachers, as SNAs, as admin staff, as catering staff, and our two extraordinary caretakers in supporting these young men across their five or six years. I also wish to thank the choir, the music department, Mish and Neve and the boys. I was told today, as most of you know, there's about 100 in the choir. This apparently is the executive choir, <laughs> selected by, I don't know, various sound effects or something, but anyway, and, and as, as we've seen tonight, they are the executive choir. Uh, they bring such joy to our events, such pride to our school. I think Father Sean mentioned the word being proud. We are proud of every one of our students here tonight. I also want to thank, as has already been mentioned, the parents. For some people, and I've met with some of you already, it is your final time journeying with us. And uh, that's, that's a milestone in itself. That's, that's a benchmark in itself. And I will say that maybe we weren't always right, and maybe we didn't always agree on the pathway forward. But I will say that as a school, we were never wrong for the wrong reasons, and that we do our absolute best to support each and every boy in this school. And that's how we will continue. And balancing the needs of 865 boys is a complex activity but it is one we enter in in good faith. This is the high point of our school year. Our six years are a representation of what we purport to do as a school. It's a broad, general, catch-all role. Our mission statement tells us that our role is to develop the whole person. It is a mission we strive to achieve. Schools are human living, breathing places, 875 students, each with an incredible, complex backstory. They overlap with each other and with 100 staff, each with incredibly complex backstories that overlap with each other. It's a lot of overlapping sometimes. Therefore, together, we make a living, growing, breathing community. And we as teachers go about our daily work with the boys, and I think Khan captured it really well, gradually growing, gradually needing us less as they develop, moving from that childhood state of first year, I'm going to say to the near adulthood, gentlemen, of sixth year. Our advices are no longer quite as needed. You hold the map. Tom Blank and all as it may be, for yourself. And of course the 12th of March 2020 stands out as a day when our accepted norms of how the world worked were just torn up. And yet while life progressed under a new world view, it is my belief and my experience that much was lost. This group benefited from the return to a more normalised school experience over the last 18 months. With the, the demise of the mask, teams began to train again. Hand sanitizer became a seldom remembered occasion. Social distancing, as is evidenced by tonight, was no more. Evening study returned to the joy of Mr. Greeley. And parent meetings, board meetings, trips, tours, and talks all got going. Normal chaos was restored at St. Prindon's. And we are really proud of how our six years stepped up this year. You have set high standards for yourselves. You are mature in your approach. The, the absolute panic of project work, which I know parents go through as well, was just slightly less this year. The senior student council, Con and Tom, representatives of same, are a cross-section of our students and provide great leadership and insight for me on the daily life of the school. Um, 
in, in about a week's time, you will get your 2023 yearbook. I had a sneak peek yesterday. Lots of your memories resonate with me. The ski trip to Italy. Whoever thought taking 126 boys on a ho to a hotel on the side of a mountain for a week in Italy. Mr. Lucy, we, we need to have a chat about it. Uh, it certainly stands out for me as the first real return to what we were about as a school. Representing the school in so many different teams, the soccer, the basketball, the cross country, the athletics, the Gaelic football, um, even if some of us missed the All-Ireland final last year because of COVID, um, debating school science quiz teams, maths teams, your memories of seeing Cheltenham at the same, two fellas said their single greatest memory of school was being a first year and seeing Cheltenham at the same for the first time. I won't even try to explain it. It's absolutely the same. Uh, making friends, performing with the choir at Electric Picnic. The impact of Michael Fassbender, who's been also referenced, his drama school, its impact on students in the school, the fun of lunchtime soccer, This evening I was uh, privileged to watch the awards that, that the RE team had put together and the, and the video. And watching you watch yourselves, the fun you had, that collective shared joy, it put me in, in mind of Philadelphia, here I come. There's a brilliant quote in it where the protagonist is reflecting on how the, the ordinary things of his life that no one else would understand were in fact really important. He says no one will ever understand the fun, for there was fun, foolish, silly fun, and foolish, silly laughing. And even now, it is being distilled of all its coarseness, and, what, and what's left is precious, precious gold. I'm a past pupil of the school, Everything negative that happened to me when I was here, I can't remember. I can remember that fun. We used to play handball. It was a great game before someone put a roof on the alleys. I, you will remember tonight. You will remember that camaraderie forever. And that's a good thing. Tonight's theme, life is a journey, and you hold the map. What a fitting image. You are about to plot your own journey on life's map. You are about to step off these known pathways into a new and exciting phase of your life. Along with the usual hopes and dreams that turn up in your yearbook of, you know, as usual, world domination, millionaire status, athletic prowess, great success. Uh, one of you quotes Chris Gardner, a guy that I find amazing, the guy who wrote The Pursuit of Happiness. Still a dreamer yet more of a realizer than ever before. I know this was my time to sail. On the horizon I saw the shiny future as before. The difference now was that I felt the wind at my back. I was ready. Gentlemen, you are ready. Thank you. Okay, and Mr. Barden now informs me that the executive choir will perform. Parents, you will get the head start for the food. Boys. Well, normally it's boys and their toys. Tonight, it's boys and their ties. Okay, so you get your past pupil tie. So you stay here and we will give you those. I will ask for moms or dads to take possession just so that they last 24 hours. Thank you. Thank you. So, <clears throat> so before the final hymn, we'll just have our final prayer and blessing. So 
Loving God, you have given to us as spiritual food the saving sacrament of your Son. In thanksgiving, grant that being strengthened by the gifts of courage and joy, we may serve you more devotedly and be worthy of still further blessings through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's a hymn in Thanksgiving. Well done. <laughs> At first I was afraid, I was petrified Kept thinking I could never live without you by my side But then I spent so many nights thinking how you did me wrong And I grew strong, and I learned how to get along And so you're back from outer space Just do.